Uh, I will now recognize myself for five minutes of questioning. Thank you all uh, to our witnesses for coming in and offering your expertise and insight uh, and testimony today. And in fact, I've been reviewing quite closely the sworn testimonies from some of you and the agencies represented uh, that have been previously provided to other um, House and Senate committees. And I have noticed some contradictions in FBI testimony as well as uh, some of the Department of Defense records um, that I'd like for us to just use this opportunity to clear up. And I'll start with Director Ray. Um, Director Ray, we now know that the attacks were planned out in the open on popular social media platforms like Parler and Telegram. Among thousands of violent uh, messages, there were messages saying, quote, if that they certified, quote, if they certify Biden, we will storm Capitol Hill executions on the steps. Also, uh, wide social media activity included posts discussing specific details ahead of the attack, ranging from maps with layouts of the Capitol complex and construction plans for the gallows. Um, during the Judiciary Committee hearing, Director Ray, you noted that none of the more than 500 people charged so far had been previously under FBI investigation. Does the FBI regularly include social media monitoring as part of its efforts to combat, uh, combat violent extremism? Thanks. I, uh, two things. I appreciate the question. So first, uh, it's not none. It's almost none, uh, which Got is it. important. And, and of course, our investigation is very much ongoing, and the facts are changing probably even as we speak here. Uh, but second, uh, as to social media, uh, I think there's a, there's a, it's understandable that there's a lot of confusion on the subject. We, we do not. We have very specific policies that have been at the department for a long time that govern our ability to uh, use social media. And when we have an authorized purpose and proper predication, there's a lot of things we can do on social media, and we do do, and we aggressively do. Mm -hmm. But what we can't do, what we can't do on social media uh, is without proper predication and an authorized purpose, just uh, monitor just in case on social media. Now, if the policies should be changed to reflect that, that might be one of the important lessons learned coming out of this whole experience, but that's not something that, that currently the FBI has mm -hmm. the uh, either the authority or certainly the resources, frankly, to do, which gets back to the, the point that I was making in response to one of your colleagues earlier about... Thank you. Sorry, I, I apologize for interrupting. Source. We just have uh, limited yes. time. Um, at that same hearing, you also later stated that certainly, and you had stated during this hearing, that uh, you all were aware of online chatter about the potential for violence, um, but, quote, I'm not aware that we had any intelligence indicating that hundreds of individuals were going to storm the Capitol. Um, now, prior to January 6th, we saw, and rather, we saw that the FBI officials previously testified to the Senate Homeland Security Committee that there was no such intelligence um, despite the fact that the FBI may have been aware of those posts. Would you be able to clarify that for us? Fortunately, Congresswoman, I'm not sure I know exactly what somebody said in an earlier testimony, so I'm reluctant to, to try to um, elucidate somebody else's testimony, unfortunately, since I don't have the benefit of, mm -hmm. of seeing it. So was this... And I apologize, if I, I apologize if I'm, you know, boiling this down too much, but it seems as though there may have been either a failure to collect intelligence on this insurrection prior to it happening or a failure to act on intelligence um, that we may have had. Is it, given the answer that you just gave, was this due, you know, perhaps policies that you had uh, you know, that you just pointed to, was this a failure to collect intelligence prior to the event, or was it a failure to act on intelligence that we may have had? Uh, I don't know that I would, I'm not sure I could, could put it in either of those buckets. I, I think what, what this shows is the challenge of getting sufficient information about what is out there on social media to be able to have 
uh, the ability to distinguish between what we're calling sort of aspirational versus the intentional. It's Understood. sort of the wheat from Sorry, the Sorry, one last question. That I gave earlier. One last yeah. question. I apologize. Um, Director Ray, do you have any reason whatsoever to believe that uh, President Trump or anyone in the administration did not want to deploy the National Guard on January 6th? Uh, that's not really a subject I have anything to add on, I'm afraid. Are there any records of conversations between the FBI and the Trump administration that would potentially reveal knowledge of a potential of the potential of the attack um, prior to January 6th? I'm not aware of any records of the sort you're describing. Um, most of the interaction between certainly the White House uh, would have been with the White House and the Justice Department, not the FBI. Thank you very much. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20-hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it, according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white, military-looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black-on-white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah, you know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house, trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did, they, last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th that, there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that that January 6th 
is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage ap across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went. They're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it ba via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. I don't agree with it. And I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th, and they put out a national call, and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be, uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy, it, is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most, uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day-to-day -day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has, has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure it does in certain areas. But is the, is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.